The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in the land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. Receive your gift. Zachariah, if you are giving anything to anyone to show the love of Jesus, it must be something worthwhile. It must be something that you value yourself. It must be a sacrifice. Unlike idols of wood and stone made by human hands, the living God is himself maker of heaven and earth. He alone is the source of our life. We live because he lives. The prophet Jeremiah reminded God's people that every goldsmith is shamed by his idols. His images are a fraud. They have no breath in them. They have no breath in them. Money, 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 money. But Elkai, the living God, money. emphasizes God's role money. as creator of all that is, money. in contrast to money. idols money. made of metal, wood, money. or stone, money. which are merely the creations money. of human hands. Jeremiah paints a vivid picture. The customs of the peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel. They adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails so it will not totter. Crow in a melon patch. Their idols cannot speak. They must be cared because they can do no harm nor they can do any good. They have no breath in them. They have no breath in them. They have no breath. Rebecca, I didn't expect you today again. It's been raining all morning. Miss Tara, the work has to be done, so I am here. Come, come this way. Thank you. spending some quiet time in nature. But as we go into this time of worship, I invite you to spend some quiet time for yourselves, considering the marvels of God's creation. The trees, all the vegetation, the rivers, the seas, and all forms of life. What other aspects of creation baffle your mind? Well, let's go to a house church 
where I'm excited to hear a young man recite a poem by Bob Gotti. Who is he, you ask? Well, he's a Christian poet who hopes his poems will inspire unbelievers to move towards the living God. Let's go. The maker of each one of us is the only true and living God. Which one of you can tell me who the living God is? Go ahead. I learned a poem about the living God by Bob Gotti. The living proof of the living God surrounds us wherever we trod. The creation itself is proof that God does exist with all his truth. And friend, he is a loving God, comforting us with staff and rod. He is the shepherd from above, guiding us with an awesome love. Friend, he is a personal God, smiling down upon you with a nod. He wants to be to you a friend, guiding you personally to the end. Very good. That's very good. God of creation, Almighty God, there is no other God to be compared with you. You are the only living God, and we praise you that you are active in human affair. You are active in the life of this nation. You are active in the life of this family. You have always been and you will always be. Our existence is in you. We owe our lives to you. In you we live and move and have our being. Each day we awake we can see and experience your presence in our lives and in all that is around us. All we are capable of is on account of your life in us. Let our lives, O oh Lord, praise you. Amen. Are you losing weight, man? Mm -hmm. That's good. What length sleeve you want? The same as this same one. Same as this. Yeah. The dress where I look nice, you see. Yeah. Ah! Woo! Imagine, Mr. Hyman Christian, and this is what is going on in, within here. I am leaving. A matter of fact, come, let me out of your house. You know something, a matter of fact. Miss. Tara, have a seat. You know you need Jesus in your life. Have a seat, Miss Tara. Make we talk. But it's not that bad. What do you mean it's not that bad? It is that bad, Miss Tara. These idols that you're worshipping, they can't get you into heaven. You need a living God in your soul. Jeremiah 10, verses 5 and 6. And I want you to just listen carefully to the words. They are upright like a palm tree, and they cannot speak. They must be carried, because they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, nor can they do any good. Inasmuch as there is none like you, O God, you are great, and your name is great in might. But how can I be so sure about this God you speak? Miss Tara, God that I speak about cannot be carried around. But if you accept him in your life, he will carry you around. Only the living God can get you into heaven when you serve him. I never thought of it that way. But it makes sense. Let's hear some thoughts on the living God. When 
I think of Elkai, living God, I think of God having a relationship with me, a personal relationship. I think of a, a, not, a, not a being that is dead, but a being that is alive, and a being that is giving me life. When I think about the living God, I, I, I call to mind the God who is alive and in my everyday experiences. Um, God who brings life not only to me but to every situation around me that has death and potential death in it. For me, the living God is with us in every single moment, lending breath to us, causing us to, to come alive regardless of what we are doing, where we are going. It is just life in its fullness and abundance. The sound of those words fills me with life anew. Those words infuse in me a richness of life. Those words make me think of COVID and the food insecurity from which the world is suffering. And I reflect very specifically on my father who has been deceased a long time, but he planted a crop called arrowroot and year after year, the arrow root springs again. So the living God is a source that will never die, a source supported by himself and to support us. I'm full of life when I hear that expression. We don't have much time here on earth. Our resources are running out, natural resources. And we're now looking for life outside of earth. We're looking for life on Mars. And what Elkai brings out to me, that not just in our local space, God exists, but God exists in this vast universe. Everywhere that we go, God is present. And that so that's what makes a difference that God is not just a statue. God is not just a concept. That God is not just something out there that don't business with what's happening inside the world. What are your thoughts on the living God? God word from 2 Kings 19, 15 to 16. And Ezekiah Prayer to the Lord and say, And Ezekiah prayed to the Lord, O Lord, you are the God of Israel, who sit down upon your throne over the cherubim them. Are you alone a God over all the kingdom them upon the earth? Are you alone make up heaven and down a earth? Bend down, O Lord, 
and hear what me I say. Open your eye them, O oh Lord, and see for yourself the word them with Sennacherib use for mock you, the only God we alive. A God word this. Let us now listen to the reflection about El Kai, the true and the living God. As is mentioned in the reading from Jeremiah 10, there were those who had turned to idols, images that they made and worshipped. Idol worship was a common feature of the Old Testament times. The children of Israel, God's specially chosen people, were also given to turning away from the living God to idols. Objects in a real sense, gods that were dead, gods that were powerless, gods that could be controlled and manipulated by human beings. We today may not carve out images as they did, but the truth is anything in our lives that occupies the place that should be occupied by the Almighty and Living God is really our idol. Idols must be torn down and the Living God must be worshipped and served if we are to live a life that honors the purpose for which we were created. In the Jeremiah 10 passage, look at the comparison between the idols and the Living God. The gods of the nations were made by the people, those who cut the trees and the craftsmen who chiseled the object into shape. We are also told that the idols had to be carried because they could not walk. This suggests that in fact the craftsmen and the people were more powerful than the gods because it is the craftsman who makes the gods. The craftsman manipulated them into shape and they could not move without help of the people. What kind of God is this that can do nothing by itself? The crafted gods could not move by themselves and could not speak, could not communicate. They were like a scarecrow in a field, present but no power. How then could anyone rely on these gods? One would expect that a god would have something to offer, some inspiration to give, some wisdom to impart to its lesser beings. In verse 8, they were described as worthless wooden idols, and the people are described as senseless and foolish because they were taught by these gods. Our God, the true God, is described as great, mighty in power. The wisest leader or the greatest king could not be compared with this God. This God is living and eternal, the creator of the universe. We are living because God is the living God. We are a part of creation. We experience creation on account of the living God who is the creator. No one creates this God. This God is God all by himself. Because God is living, God is active and impacting, and therefore we stand to benefit from this dynamic God. This eternal God sharing in our lives and space. Why should we then turn to idols? Why should we waste our lives with idols? That's no investment at all. Let's only pause and consider our lives and we will see the active presence of the living and life-giving God, providing and protecting, empowering and sustaining. This living God deserves our total allegiance. Ms. Taro, would you like to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and surrender completely to Him? That makes sense. Rebecca, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I am tired of living the way I was living. Surrender to him now. Pray to him right now. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, I confess that you have not been first place in my life. Forgive me, oh God, for disregarding you. Please come into my heart and help me to remove my idols and allow you to reign on the throne of my heart and in my life. 
I commit my life to you right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Talk with each other about what it would mean if God were dead, and what does it mean to know that we serve a God who is alive. What are some examples of idols? Well, anything really that but keeps no. you distracted. It that you're addicted to. It's more, it's more about a, an intense obsession with something, anything that you become obsessed with beyond logic. It dominates your time, your behavior. Um, it takes you away from worshiping God. And it takes you away from worshiping God. Yeah, excellent point right there. For example, can an idol be a phone? That can clearly be defined as, a, as an obsession. So it's the same type of concept you have to consider where if you allow that instrument or that device or that behavior to dominate how you behave and think, so much so that you don't even remember to pray then I read the Bible first thing in the morning on my phone yeah. yes and I read the physical Bible the last thing the only thing I use my phone to do is watch TikTok and text and play and communicate with friends but that's okay that's 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 normal behavior idol is something which occupies your time from not, not doing anything else especially not worshiping God pretty much yeah yeah and so at the end of the day we do everything in moderation. But in order to make God our priority, as the Bible tells us, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So whatever we're doing, we make sure we put God first.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us in this exciting, soul-searching, intergenerational worship experience. We hope you have been blessed and impacted and that you'll join us again next time. Catch up with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube and let us know what comes to your mind when you hear the term Elkai, the living God. Who made it?